Good morning, my friends. This is the Grim Flayer. Hope you're doing very well today. Hope you are ready again to jund them out with me on this channel. This is another donation league. We are back in league mode. I haven't played a league in a couple weeks, so time to shake off a little coating of rust. Uh, my attention and time has been devoted to the Battle for the Veil tournament, which was a resounding success. Please do check out the Battle for the Veil videos if you have not already done so. This donation league, though, as we get back on the DL train, I'll have several coming out for you throughout the rest of the month, is brought to us by Nostier. Nostier is a longtime Confidant tier Patreon supporter and a Discord user and a top eight participant in the Battle for the Veil, the only Jund representative to have made it into the top eight, and one of only two BGX players as a whole to make it into the top eight. Nastier is somebody whose contributions I really appreciate on the Discord as well as on the calls. Um, I consider him a very, very talented player, and I'm very grateful for his support and excited to be playing his list today. So big shout out to Nastier and also to our newest Patreon supporters, we have a trio of new Inquisitors, Joseph Chiavaro, MomQuest, and Daniela Skotecchi. Hope I got all of your names correct, my friends. Thank you all so very, very much. And we also have a brand new tireless tier supporter named Miles, very generous of Miles. Thanks to each and every one of you. Shout out to you. Shout out to Nostier as well. Now let's talk for a minute about Nostier's list before we get right into a league. Okay, so Nostier's list is derived initially from the list that he did play the Battle for the Veil with, and we kind of worked backwards from there. He began by cutting underperformers and then adding things that he thought were good in the meta. We had some really productive back and forths, and he submitted a few different drafts. This is kind of the 3.0 list that we both agreed would look pretty good right about now. So noteworthy inclusions are a second Raging Ravine. Um in the mana base and note how light our green splash is so a second blood crypt as well don't necessarily need very many green sources at all uh, with most progressions in this deck two copies of cling to dust will help kind of drive the deck forward find us uh, just more cards and therefore reduce the wrong half of the deck problem broadly uh, broadly a well positioned card as, as it has been for quite some time Two Fatal Push, four Lightning Bolt, we are issuing Blood Chief's Thirst here, which is a card that some Jun players have been playing, and we are on a 3-3 Inquisition and Thoughtseize split. Moving along, we have a very heavy permanent presence and a very powerful top end, which is something I've kind of come to regard as a signature Nostier move. The four Tarmogoyf non-negotiable, three Ren and Six, pretty much the same, right? Uh, two copies of Kroxa, full, full four Lily of the Veil, vale, three each of Spyro and Bloodbraid for a really impactful top end, and a copy of Clothis, God of Destiny, a card that Nostier is quite high on. Uh, note that we do have a slight dearth of removal in terms of the catch-all removal. Um, we don't have Maelstrom Pulse, and our Coligan's Command is in the side. Partially, that is kind of an acknowledgement that you need to, even on a resource-depleting mid-range deck, you do need to generate a lot of value these days to keep up with the other fair decks of the format. And it's also an acknowledgement that Abrupt Decay and Assassin's Trophy, if you look at the current meta, both seem really well-positioned. So to that end, I think I, I was the one who suggested moving away from Pulse, even though I love the card. We've got a really heavy top end, as is Decay and Trophy are both really good. I would love to have another copy of this type of effect at the two drop slot, but we don't quite have the slots. Maybe we would have to pare down on the one drop slot of interaction really to make room for that. So um, again, we're hoping with the power of cards like Cling to Dust to see more cards. Spiromancer, you know, these cards can help us find the interaction we need at the right times. But yeah, lots of usual Jun stuff going on in the main deck and indeed in the sideboard. Um, some old staples and some newer staples are coexisting alongside one another. To each of Brutality, Plague Engineer, Ashiok, Dream Render, Nile Spellbomb. Three copies of Cleansing Wildfire, which is a card that I find it very hard to play without these days, or very hard to justify playing without, I should say. And then we have some nice one ofs rounding out the side. Liliana the Last Hope has seemed better in recent weeks than she has in 
several months prior to those weeks. Um, one of Coligan's command, again, it'd be nice to have room for this in the main deck, but we kind of don't, so it is there in the side. And we have that one of Boyle that just does exactly what we want it to do, hopefully, in terms of allowing us an I win button in unfavored matchups. And one engineered explosives. This is a card that Nastier and I did discuss a bit. It's a card that he made a pretty good case for, and I was very happy to include and give it a shot. Obviously, there are other things you could play instead of it, but in context of the deck as a whole, as well as in the context of the meta, I think now is a pretty darn good time to play E. So there we go, my friends. Thank you once again to Nastier. Uh, please do give this video a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. And once again, I do urge you if you're in the mood for some different style of gameplay with a wide variety of commentators co-commentating with myself and seeing some new decks, seeing some great play, um, the Battle for the Veil stuff is well worth your time to watch. So thanks to everybody who was involved in that. And now let's play some Modern Junt. Okay, we are on the draw in round one. Opponent will keep seven. I'm going to keep this seven as well. Um, we're definitely hoping Lightning Bolt or Cling to Dust is a key card in the matchup. If not, if they're kind of doing things that don't care so much about that, we could find ourselves spinning our wheels just a bit. Um, opponent going Hallowed Fountain Pass. That is interesting. I think I'm going to play out this fetch land. Um, if it's a blue-white control deck, they could be playing Spreading Seas. This helps us not walk directly into a Seas. Um, also, if they just do nothing, we can at least consider fetching and then clinging our own fetch land just to draw a card. All right. Blue-white control of some kind confirmed. Not really a matchup I want to see when I'm, as I say, kind of shaking off the rust, but that is what it is. So are we going to cling here? I guess so. I guess so. We have way too many lands for our own good. Find of a Tarmogoyf does reward us, especially because we just draw another land off the top afterwards. So game one, round one against the control deck, and we are already extraordinarily flooded. Um, our position's actually <laughs> kind of poor right now. Um, if Spyro resolves, anything can happen. If the opponent just passes with counter magic and we feel priced into just jamming the Spyro and it does not resolve, oh boy, oh boy, I don't know. We've also drawn a couple basics already against the Path to Exile Field of Ruin deck, that's pretty bad. Okay, opponent going to Fairy Time Raveler, bouncing the Goyf. So Spyro almost definitely going to, wow, we draw another land, yeah. Spyro it is. And I'm going to pitch Black Cleave Cliffs and Basic Mountain. We found Ren and Six Abrupt Decay, a couple of really good finds. Now we're getting into the meat of the Jun deck. Now we're demonstrating an ability to potentially compete with uh, what a blue white deck could offer. Um, decaying the Teferi's okay. They look like they're straight blue-white. If so, they might be Stoneblade. Uh, therefore, it is not necessarily clear that we should just decay the Teth on site. Um, so I think I'm going to begin by trying to just attack him off the field. This does let the opponent snap opt and then trade, and we won't be able to respond. Um, I think that'd be just fine, right? Okay, Spyro finding us two pieces of action, answering it to Fairy seems pretty good to me. <clears throat> Alright, why don't we lead on the Goyf here? I think it's a good play. Well, I think it's a good play if we expect them expect that they're holding up like force of negation, which I'm kind of reading them for. So I'm not going to run the Ren and Six out just yet. Let's go with the Goyf. We 
We'll get forest if they do decide to field or path us um, in instant speed, timely reinforcements. Got it. Teferi's uh, plus one ability was still active for the duration of the turn, despite us answering him. Opponent will brainstorm with Jace. Think I'm gonna bolt him after this resolves. Seems like a pretty good use of bolt. Bolt will connect. We draw another Spyro. Okay. I do like it. I do like it a lot. Let's try to lead on the Renin 6. This gives us a couple of really cool options if it resolves. Force of negation, a real possibility, but... That's still a two for one in our favor if, if that ends up happening. Okay, so now buying back a land's pretty good. Hitting a token's pretty good. I think I'm gonna hit a token here. And then just ship in with the Goyf, use Spyro to protect the Ren, plus Fatal Push. Okay, opponent chumping with the Soldier anyway. I wasn't sure that they would. They're all the way at 20. If we had read them for a chump, then it would be, you know, we could have maybe attacked a little more aggressively. Okay, opponent with a Terminus. It's a little rough. So next turn, picking a land back up with Ren, only to pitch it to Spyro, is going to let us Spyro more aggressively than we otherwise might be able to. Love to draw like a Thought Seize here. Bloodbraid Elf, pretty good too. All right. I'm just going to pick Cliffs back up since we're not be able to hold up Decay either way. But let's... Use the Ren. Use the Bloodbraid Elf. Very good draw. Oh. One of our only whiffs, another abrupt decay. It's like the second decay and the second push are the only whiffs in our deck. That's real bad. Okay. Elf itself gets mono leaked. Sure. Um. I think I'm supposed to hang on to the cliffs with Spyro in mind here. Opponent representing potentially the third Mystic Sanctuary with one of these fetch lands, but we'll go get a basic with the first one. And then it's Teferi. And then it's good old Teferi. Will they immediately draw a card? Often in this situation, you'll just see them tick up, but in this case, you can really see them just like, okay. Interesting, interesting. They do just tick up, so they've got some action in hand. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, let's just decay. We'll begin with the decay, see what happens here. The 
reading them for counter magic here. We're just going to say go. If they decide it's worthwhile, they can always cryptic, bounce the Ren, draw a card. Um, ooh, Archmage's Charm, definitely brutal too. Third Sanctuary to buy it back. Yep. Okay. Still just trying to draw a discard spell more than almost anything. Usually at this late stage of the game, opponent fielding us is pretty bad, but in this case it would let us get a second green. Would make our life a little easier in some ways. Oh, I didn't want to draw it, though. <laughs> didn't want to draw it, though. All right. Let's try a Tarmogoyf as counter magic bait more than anything. Yeah, okay. Well, opponent not really representing much. So let's try for another good old Spyro. Really hope it resolves. Another Monoleak would be really annoying here. Ah, oh, they haven't. I have another Monoleak. Okay, at least we've got a Ren ticking up toward ultimate, the opponent down to two cards. And play that forest out. Yeah, the Monoleak's a little rough. It's not the most surprising thing in the world given their a, a relatively aggressive Archmage's Charm on a Tarmogoyf, but still, not good for us, is it? Not good at all. Uh, Liliana, however, is pretty good for us. I don't think we're supposed to run her out yet, though. I think we're just going to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Playing this mountain doesn't do much for us at the moment. So I'm going to hang on to it. We're going to hold up either the Spyro tokens or the Cling to Dust here. Yes, a very annoying cryptic command. Resetting the run. All right, I'm just going to make the tokens. Tarmogoyf. Okay. Yeah, let's lead on the Ren. Force of Negation. All right. I'm going to follow up with Goyf. And then Lily. Oof, another force. Dang, dang, dang. All right. Still hanging on to the mountain. Feels a little bad to go shields down with cling to dust, but I do believe that to have been correct there. We had so many good spells. We were using up their mana, had a realistic chance of resolving something relevant. They did kind of do everything they wanted to do there, though. They countered the high impact stuff, and they had a Teferi to bounce the Goyf after the fact. Another Lily seems good. Let's just begin by trying to attack Teferi off the field. All right, Goyf is a known inclusion, so let's play that out first. All right. 
We can play around a third Monolique or around Snap Monolique by playing the land out first. I guess we should. They have another... Oh, okay, Scry 2 with Omen of the Sea. I was going to say they have another Cryptic. Really? All right, time to lose the Fatal Push we've been hanging on to for nearly the entire game. Ooh, they got path. They got path. Brutal. Nevertheless, our position is pretty good. They're in total top deck mode, although they did scry one thing to the top. We have a cling to dust in the graveyard, a lily on four on the field, a couple elemental tokens. Our position's okay. And we rip blood braid? All right. Seems great. Uh, yeah, I'm going to cast it to fill up our graveyard to get it out of the deck. Obviously, we can just tick up with Lily, but this might also play around some stuff a little bit better, too. We can respond with a cling if they have, like, Snapcaster. Just barely, but we can. Okay, they're gonna bounce their own Mystic Sanctuary. And then draw a card. Then our Thought Seize will not resolve because they draw an Omen of the Sea. Not yet, anyway. Some pretty savvy stuff here from OP. Field of Ruin Mystic Sanctuary. Wow, that really couldn't have worked out much better for them, honestly. But, <laughs> um, but it's still all right for us, for sure. We take up. Obviously, they pick that field. Which is good for us, because we're out of basics. They already have two fields. We don't need a third Wasteland effect. All right, so we are obligated to compete over this Cryptic, I think. We find the Decay that we put back in our deck after cascading to, into it off of the first Bloodbraid Elf. Opponent has found another sum. They've just found a Shark Typhoon. Jeez, their draws have been insane. Insane. Our draws have been bad, Thoughtseize. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well... At least it's free Liliana fodder. Okay, on their upkeep they will scry. Makes sense. They do put one to the top. Alright, so they're about to draw... Something that's going to let them make a shark, presumably. Or not. At least not right away. How interesting. We draw Clothis. All right. Sheesh. <clears throat> Wish we had a lethal attack on the field. Should should be pretty hard to lose from here, but I guess let's just go to attack, see what they have. What would they have topped here? A path to exile, I guess that makes some sense.
Don't think I'm going to decay this shark. I do think I'm going to alt. Shark Typhoon, White Lens, and the Shark Token, I think, is correct because we're going to leave them either with all lens or with like a couple decent things, but only two. Yeah, I'm just going to do it like this. Um, there's a lot of thought that could go into this, but I'm about a minute behind on the clock. And I think we likely have it almost no matter what with this Clothis as a follow-up. Oh, opponent accidentally chose the wrong pile. People do that pretty frequently. You're supposed to select the one to sacrifice. Are we conceding here? Or is, yeah, okay. Cool. All right, taking game one off of control. These games are so taxing to play while commentating, I can't even tell you. Uh, but that feels really good. We didn't see Stoneforge Mystic. Um, we just saw like a straight blue-white control deck with Terminus and Shark Typhoon. Um, so that's how we're going to side. So we're not as interested in answering Stoneforge, although K Command could still be okay. Um, they didn't seem like they were that all that interested in their graveyard either. I wonder if we could possibly expect a rest in peace. I'm not certain. Um, so I think our best card by far is Boil. I also think Collective Brutality, Last Hope are pretty good. Um, there's a lot of other things we could do, but I am probably going to bring those in, cut the pushes. I'm living in fear of a rip here. Um, what to do about that? Maybe just sideboard a little more conservatively. Um, there's already like an, an interesting incentive to move away from Goyfs. If we do think that they're likely enough to be on rip that we want to hedge away from it, it's probably better to hedge away by, by just like cutting Goyfs. Um... We don't want to have too few win conditions to ever get there, but I think with all the planeswalkers, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try that here on the draw. We're gonna try to just like strictly outvalue them. And so if we're doing that, I'm gonna play at least one Ashiok as a win condition and has a, a lot of utility anyway. And then um you could always shave bolts here, but I think keeping bolts in is okay too. Um K command's definitely reasonable. Honestly, like a push is, is reasonable for the shark tokens, but maybe just beating those with bolt is okay. I'm going to do this. We could could also just play a Nile spell bomb instead of that K command. You know, I'm going to trim a bolt. So we're we've got all of our bases slightly too strongly covered. And I think that's kind of where we want to be here. We'll see exactly what they look like post side too, and can easily like lean harder in one direction or another in game three. If there is one, which there won't be because we have boil in our opening hand. GG. 
Nah, it's that's definitely not GG, but it is definitely a good keep. If OP had mulliganed like to five, it'd probably <laughs> it'd probably be GG, right? So I wonder what we're going to see out of them that we didn't see before. We're gonna see us for the second time keep a land heavy hand and draw a land immediately off the top, which is not good. But it worked out okay for us in the end last time. Okay, opponent with Monoleak, Double Path, and Timely. Pretty easy take a Monoleak here. None of the other cards really do anything against our current progression. Oof. Too many lands. Too many lands. It's all right. It's all right. We have the tools here. We draw Spyro. Okay, I think I'm supposed to jam Lily here and test them for removal. Or rather, for permission. Her resolving is great news. Now... Assuming they have no way to just pressure her to remove her with, like, a Celestial Purge. They have something. They have a Shark Typhoon. Okay, that, that does pressure her, but not in the most unbeatable way. It's just a 1-1, one, one, so she can stick her around by continuing to tick up, if that's what we want to do. They do have a fourth land. Inquisition, huh? I don't think we're supposed to use that yet. I think we want to just pass, look for a spot to boil. And like on the, like, so if we take up Pitch Forest, we can then pass an on their end step, or if and when they tap out, we can boil. Whether or not the boil succeeds, we can then untap on our turn, and if we fetch, like, Blood Crypt, we can Inquisition into Spyro. So, that's going to be the line. Okay, Liliana taking care of their paths. Opponent's hand is two unknowns plus a timely reinforcements. Archmage's charm. All right. In response, boil. Right? Right. Seems good. <laughs> Seems really good. Ooh. All right. Haven't done that in a little while. That's pretty exciting. Not going to lie. Opponent's still sticking it out, though. Assassin's Trophy. I think that's a pretty free pitch. I think I'm going to lead on Inquisition, though, just to be sure. They have Spell Snare, Timely Reinforcements. And they have two lands, so they're going to rebuild. Yeah, let's take the Timely. We're going to keep taking up with Lily. Lose our trophy. And jam a Spyro while Hellbent, which is... Always what we like to do. 
guess they're not going to rebuild necessarily all that well in the face of the Lily plus one. They probably... Hmm, okay. I was just about to say, I think they might pitch Spell Snare here, but they probably have to hope that Spell Snare lines up, given how things have gone for them. We've had a pretty naughty progression, not gonna lie. It's been a really strong. A true junding out. And a thought sees abrupt decay. Seems okay. Seems okay at answering their only two things. <laughs> Oh, you love to see it. Shark putting in a lot of work, though, keeping our Liliana down. Another Spyro. Wow. Hmm. Yes, I'm going to Thought Seize here. Opponent says, good game. GG, well played. All right, yeah, I mean, Jund, I have long maintained, does have the tools to beat up on the blue control decks in ways that good old Rock simply does not. And we saw that in full evidence here. Everything from Spyro to Boil to Clothis as a finisher in round one, even Lightning Bolt uh, killing Jace at a, in a really efficient way at an opportune time. Uh, Jund has great, great game against these uh, traditional control decks. And we saw that here. So that's a great way to start out a league. And we'll see you for round two. We have won the die roll for round two, and hmm, I think we're supposed to keep it, but it is very painful, and it's also got an awkward gap between our two lands, which admittedly we can do a lot of, off of, excuse me, and those two Bloodbraid Elves in hand, but this hand can win us a lot of games against a wide variety of decks, I think. It's got some weaknesses, too, and we'll hope not to fall victim to those. Excuse me, here. So the opponent, I don't know what deck they're on. Because they're playing, like, green-white hate bear-style stuff, or, you know, toolbox-style stuff with Eldritch Evolution, Knight of Autumn, Restoration Angel. But they're also playing Utopia Sprawl. Um, yeah. I think we're just gonna play for the long game, take Resto. We can always bolt the Knight of Autumn to deny them an evolution target. Restoration Angel is a really hard card in many ways to play against or to play around. Um, we need to just draw some lands. Draw like some, some painless lands here would be great. I don't know what the opponent's doing though. Grove of the Burn Willows? I don't know why that's in the deck. So I am officially in the dark. And if I do uh, something, if I, if I fail to anticipate something... That is why, because I do not recognize the exact thing our opponent is up to. But we're going to see them get a basic forest here and sprawl it up. We'll have to make a mental note here to consider at least playing uh, Cleansing Wildfire in this matchup, which might not be obvious against like a creature toolbox deck, but hitting the sprawled forests is pretty good. And... If they're playing like Grove of the Burn Willows, they might also have a very greedy mana base, so maybe this will work to our advantage as well. I don't know. Opponent just going green, sure. We've drawn Overgrown Tomb. All right, well, it's not painless, but we'll take it. We'll take the third land here. I mean, if we can draw the fourth land in the next two draw steps, we have every reason to believe that just, like, bolting this play here and then aggroing them out is going to be enough to get there with some decent Bloodbraid Cascades. We'd love to draw Inquisition here as well, just to take the evolution. You can take the evolution, bolt the blocker, play Stomping Ground painlessly, so... They make it a 4-3. That's good for us that they didn't gain the life. And we draw Inquisition? 
Shot called. Let's go. All right. Let's go. Let's go. They have Court of Calling and Eldritch Evolution. Um, probably better to take the cord just because Eldritch is going to be dead in hand. But if they just find any creature, Eldritch is more easily castable. So I still, I still actually kind of might take Eldritch Evolution. Like, we're bolting the blocker. It's going to be a while before they can cord for anything relevant, whereas if they draw like a two drop and then Evo into it, it could be bad for us. So I think we should take the Evo, again, even though it could just rot in hand. All right, Goyf, show them the meaning of pain. It's a four-turn clock here. Opponent got very little going on in hand. If we draw, I guess the, one of the worst draws would be Black Cleave Cliffs or Raging Ravine, but almost like any any draw is good here because discard is going to force the court out of their hand. Removal can be held up, and that's fine. Another permanent's good, and a fourth land lets us Blood Braid Elf. Okay, so opponent has drawn action here because they're fetching main phase with Prismatic Vista. I hope I explained the Cord Eldritch decision well. Um, it, it's really... I think I laid out the case for both sides or tried to, but it is still kind of just almost entirely dependent on what they find as to which one will prove to be the better take. OP with an Eidolon of Rhetoric. Okay, don't... Ooh, okay, Liliana's good. I was going to say, I I do and don't care about that, but Liliana's such a good draw. Such a good draw. Let's go. Edict you. That's an enchantment, too. We're growing the goyth. Uh, not that that changes anything. I guess it shuts off another fetch land. All right, they're, they've drawn a Plains, so we know their hand is still Court of Calling Grove of the Burn Willows. They can Cord for two. So I guess we're getting a little punished for leaving the Cord, but this should be beatable. Let's we'll see what they can get with it, though. Stoneforge Mystic. I didn't see that coming. It's a little scary, actually. For Batter Skull. All right, let's find Lethal or an answer. Blood Crypt. Blood Braid Elf time. Feels good. So opponent very much forced into the chump block here. Or into the concession, as the case may be. That was another junding out. Our progressions have been really nice. So I don't know what Grove of the Burn Willows does. Um, punishing fire is not legal last time I checked. I know I haven't played in a couple weeks, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, I mean, Stoneforge Mystic, Utopia Sprawls, Grove of the Burn Willows, and then a lot of, like, the usual green-white hate berry stuff. Um, so, as I say, we should consider Cleansing Wildfire, but they were playing straight green-white um, from for as far as their spells are concerned, so I'm probably not going to do it. Um, I think... If their mana base was more greedy, and if and or if we had less to do, I would consider it pretty strongly. But um, as it is, I think we're going to maybe want an Ashiok and definitely want all of this removal and board control, uh, possibly Plague Engineers as well, although we didn't really see Mana Dorks. Um, so Plague Man is like not as good as you would assume he'd be here, maybe. Um, against most green-white decks. 
Um, so I think, yeah, for now, we're totally disregarding the idea of wildfire. I think an Ashiok and the Plague Engineers are worth considering, and I think the Brutalities, the Last Hope, K-Command, the EE all have to come in. Maybe, maybe not even the Brutalities have to come in, right? Uh, their, their deck is a little bit off the beaten path. Um, that's why it's important to sideboard against what you see and not just say, this is my sideboarding plan or protocol for all green-white creature decks, right? Anyway, um, yeah, I think we want to kind of sideboard a little conservatively. I probably bring an Unveil of Summer. Feels bad. Um, cut a couple Thought Seizes. Gonna trim a Cling. Um, again, most of our deck is pretty good, so probably gonna sideboard conservatively here until we have reason not to. Um, Cord and Evo and Stoneforge Mystic. I should play an Ashiok, I think, even on the draw. Um, yeah, Lily the Veil seems pretty good. There's a temptation to shave one. Maybe I still will on the draw, but she seems pretty darn good. But we need slots. We'll do that. And then I'm going to cut either like a Clothis or a Croxa. Not sure. Not sure at all. Let's cut the Clothis just in case they're kind of a... In case they have the outs. I mean, they're a Path to Exile deck. There could be a Rest in Peace deck. Um, I'm a little more interested in like one for one them on the draw here. Um... There we go. I thought I was having the uh, opponent will mulligan to six. Um, yeah, we'll keep this basically all interaction hand for sure. I uh, love to see the opponent mull in this matchup. Didn't really mention the Yorian thing um, because it was kind. Of, it's kind of clear that our hand in game one was had the capability of aggroing them out before Yorian became a factor. The reduction in consistency is real from a Yorian deck, so that's another reason why it's kind of hard to nail down sideboarding, because it's like, okay, we didn't see Monodorks that game, we didn't see X, Y, and Z that game, but it definitely doesn't mean they don't have them, right? Okay, opponent going red off of the Utopia Sprawl. Us with a, another Abrupt Decay. So we have a handful of great stuff here. Opponent going Rogren Triome. So, okay. See, now we're seeing like four color action. Very intriguing. We'll play a Scooze. We're in a Bolt It. I guess off of a Stomping Ground is more than acceptable here. Us with a Spyro. All right. Now seems like an okay time to Croxa, but we could also Decay or Trophy uh, to set them back vis-a-vis -vis the Utopia Sprawl. I'm kind of thinking maybe we should do that. Just just a hunch, just a bit of a hunch more than anything else. We don't have hand information, right? But that's going to be the play. I don't want to put ourselves in a position where we... like. I like using the trophy here because I don't want to put ourselves in a position where we kind of have to trophy a like three or four drop and ramp them that way into five. All right, so, I mean, red, we're seeing a much heavier presence of red here. I guess we should expect Kiki-Jiki uh, combo with Resto. An opponent will Spyro, but they do have to pitch two cards to do that, so it's not the end of the world. It's always a good card against us, right? But not the end of the world. They pitch Ewit and Birds. All right, we're learning a lot more about the deck. Us with an Inquisition. So, Inquisition, 
into Croaks is going to get them Hellbent. That's got to be pretty good here. Then we can start taking their hand apart after the fact. Uh, we already have double red. I guess we should respect our life total enough to get basic Swamp here. But why don't we just Inquisition first? Stoneforge Mystic, Birds of Paradise. Pretty glad. Pretty glad we're taking this line. Not gonna lie. So while we don't have to croak of the birds away, I still think it's fine. Like, we don't really want to spend kill spells on their board right now anyway. And now a fourth land, unless it's forest, will help us escape Kroxa. Opponent has drawn Utopia Sprawl. Renin six. Sure, let's just use that to make our fourth land drop, I guess. I'm actually just going to grab Basic Swamp here in main phase of Brutality on the Spyro. It's a little unimpressive, but it does play around whatever they could have in the way of cards like Ephemerate. Um, it does guarantee that we can protect the Ren for a little while longer. It's letting us escape Croaks the next turn. There's a lot to like. Opponent just attacking us for one. I don't know really what to make of that, I'll be honest with you. We haven't seen the card Soul Herder. I guess there's probably Soul Herders in the deck. Opponent says, oops. All right, I thought that was a incorrect attack. I guess it was a misclick. Unlucky, OP. Unlucky, unlucky. Opponent says, I'm not smart. I don't think that's true. Everybody misclicks. Everybody even misplays. Uh, us with a Coligan's command. It's pretty good. I think I'm going to begin by escaping a Kroxa. We're going to see what happens. We're going to leave a land around in case we want to buy one back. just kind of hard to go wrong with this you know if they are if they drew they don't even have white actually for a path to exile they will bolt a wren in response okay um so yeah we'll tick back up make another land drop okay we've got the croaksa it's going to be really hard for them to put yorian in hand successfully now Yeah, so if opponent had attacked both with Ren, Ren would have died there. But these things happen. Opponent's drawn Utopia Sprawl. Sure. I guess we'll get a second green. Okay, so we don't really have bad plays here. We have bad draws, though. Thought Seize is one of them, but... Let's ping a token. Um, we could sequence a few different ways here. I'm going to do it this way. I'm looking for the K draw step K command. You discard, kill your elemental. Please and thank you. 
as we as we say, a few different things could have been done there. Okay, so OP gets wrecked by the K command. They are not dead though, because they can now flash back the Spyro tokens. Um, but they could possibly concede anyway. Um, they do say GG. GG well played um, to you, OP. And it was, you know, the one misclicked attack aside. Doesn't really seem to have changed our inevitability there. Um, wow. Wow. This Jund list feeling great. Uh, we're against two decks that nominally are probably supposed to, or at least they're capable of outvaluing us, and we're kind of styling. Kind of styling on our opponents here. We do um, have to acknowledge we've had some really nice balanced draws, um, some powerful draws. We found the right interaction at the right time most of the time, and we have had enough natural density of X for ones that we are just kind of junding them out so long. May it continue. Hope you guys are having fun. Let's see if round three. Well, we have to mulligan this no lander, but uh, the opponent will at least be mulling as well. They're going to go to five. Um, do we keep Thoughtseize Decay four lands as a six? Or do we go to five? I think we're probably, with the opponent mulling so low, we're supposed to hope Thoughtseize stops them. Um, so I'm going to keep this. And the bottom one of these three black cleave cliffs. <laughs> um, and hope the thought sees just cripples them. You know, maybe eh, usually the usual suspects are Tron and Dredge. Uh, but maybe with the modal double face cards, maybe some of those decks mulligan deep as well. I'm not not sure. I still haven't been able to play as much as I would have liked against those decks. Um, and it could be anything. It could be a deck just having bad luck that's not designed to mulligan aggressively at all. You never know. But again, with the opponent mulling deep in a blind game one, I think we do want a thought seize. And the opponent is indeed a Tron deck, specifically Eldrazi Tron. Okay, thought seize you. Draw Fatal Push seems pretty okay. Opponent has no second land. All right, cool. I'm going to take one of these thought knots, even though the push can kill one. Um, if we just fade a land one time, we get to decay the map. Yes, we're going to get to decay the map. Feels so good, man. Feels so good. All right. I think with all these lands around, we can afford to be nice to our life total and get basic forests. So that's what we'll do. That's pretty big game. Um, opponent's hand just going absolutely nowhere, but that can change on a dime. And we need to find some action, too. Our hand's also kind of going nowhere. OP with a Wastes. Ourselves with a Thought Seize. Yep, I'm going to use it. Karn the Great Creator. All right, we're going to take Karn, and then we can push the Thought Knot if they find a land next turn. All right, we need to draw like Liliana, Season Pyromancer, Tarmogoyf, Stat. But not here, but not here, so Thought Not can't take it, right? <laughs> okay. I think I'm going to fetch Shock for a Blood Crypt just in case we do draw Spyro next turn. We want to be able to cast it. All right, we'll see you later. Okay, trophy. Dang, so opponent gets our trophy. That sucks. But they just have Dismember in hand, so let's draw something awesome here. Liliana would be perfect. Bloodbraid Elf. Yeah, seems real good. Bloodbraid into Lily? Dare we ask? Into Clothis? Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. I will take it. Sure, they have a lot of things they can find that beat that, but... Okay, opponent finding a map, immediately deploying, cracking it. Getting Scavenger Grounds as a way to try to defeat the Clothis, and generally just is okay against us, right? Then they'll dismember the Bloodbraid Elf, sure. Ooh, Bloodstained Mire for us, not good. So... 
anything but a land. I guess we should just hit artifacts in case they have a way to buy those back. I'm sure it doesn't matter. All right, hopefully the inevitability of Clothis will get us there. Despite the scavenger grounds. OP with the blast zone. Us with a Spyro, let's go. All right. We'll see if they'll crack the grounds here. Probably yes. No, okay. Fine with me. Cling to dust as well. All right. Okay, they're going to charge up the zone, sure. Yeah, the finds of Kling and Mountain, not very good, but our position's still pretty fine. P with the double blast zone over there. <laughs> okay. Will you crack it now? Let's eat creatures with Clothis so we can draw cards off of Kling. We've got Kroxa as well. Cool. Not sure if we should just kind of bolt face with Kroxa now or save it. Um, yeah, I genuinely don't know. So I'm just going to play Mountain and say go. They're charging the other Blast Zone up to two, but neither of them is going to kill Spyro yet. Not really sure what's going on with that. Not going to lie. OP has found what looks like a Mattery Shaper, the best card in their entire deck. The best card in their whole deck. All right. I'm going to force them to make the first move of the scavenger grounds here. Actually, why don't we just win? <laughs> I was kind of forgetting that. Oh, no, no. The scavenger ground is going to take all cards from all graveyards. All right. It's confusing because Clothis like, does one thing based on types and Cling to Dust does the other. That's why I'm always having to double read them these days now that we played both. Um, so let's eat our own Bloodbraid Elf here. Let's see what that does. Surely opponent has to use Scavenger Grounds now. I mean, if they don't, they're dead to Kroxa. If they do, we get to cling at least once in a response to draw a card. Okay, so they're going to exile all call cards from all graveyards. In response to that, we will cling this land to draw a card. We've drawn Goyf. Okay, do we want to cling again? One, two, three, four. Nah, we're probably just going to let this happen, then play Croaks a double Goyf. Well, no, I mean, the Goyfs are bad into those blast zones. Maybe we should cling again. Sure. And just fill our hand right back up before the graveyards go away. I 
I think I'm just going to play Croaks and not attack with Spyro here. Don't want to give them another look off of Reshaper. And they're dead to Clothis next turn unless they find an out. Right now. Or a way to gain life, I guess. Strange game, but... Here comes that matter shaper. I think I'm going to take the hit. And concession. Okay. Whew. Mulling against Etron and getting the win is great, but they did, to be fair, mulligan deeper than we did. Uh, we had some some real luck in that regard. It's a tough matchup. We don't have much to do out of the side. Um, cleansing Wildfire, I will play, uh, certainly hoping we can cheese them out with uh, maybe they only have like two wastes they open on, one in the opener, or Wildfires can become cantripping sinkholes. Seems good. Um... Wildfire, K-Command, I mean, even K-Command is a little medium. But because we don't have that many answers to artifacts, I think I'm supposed to play it. K-Command will consider the Plague Men as well. It's probably about it. Um, can, like, trim around the edges here. At least one cling, probably both, honestly. We don't want, we want to hedge away from Chalice on one beating us. So there's a lot there that we can cut. I think Clothis is a little medium in the matchup too, but it was great there. What if we trim like two Rens and go full like hate and disruption and interaction? I think this looks pretty good to me. Opponent takes the draw. I am unfamiliar with that strategy, but go off. But go off. Um, <laughs> I'm going to keep. This hand is way better on the play than on the draw, too. Uh, we are specifically rewarded for that. Um, maybe that's something that people do, but I've never encountered it before in this matchup. Opponent keeping seven, though. That's a, that's a big problem. That's a real big problem. Um... Us with nothing to buy back off of Ren and Six. So should we just, like, wildfire right now? I think I'm going to because it gives us the best chance of putting a good turn three together. Like finding a discard spell to lead the way or something, or finding some way to double spell, some way to Liliana. Or, or finding a card like Liliana, the way to, the way, means to cast her. Wow, I should try talking. Uh, so we're punished opponent as a backup. Urza's mine. We have a Spyro, huh? I think I'm jamming Spyro, pitching Stomping Ground and Forest, assuming we'll be able to play around and start buying those back. On the off chance we can't do that. I'm going to play Nurturing Peatland just so we have that down. But it seems like a pretty good... Pretty good way to go through the deck here. Okay, so Coligan's Command can answer the Maze Mind Tome if we so desire. The card's really good against us. I hate seeing it on curve. They've bottomed off the first scry, bottom off the second, getting some value off of it. Another tome. Yes, in a blast zone. Okay. When there are four or more exile it. Okay. Okay, okay. So I think maybe the line here is attack with Spyro, play the Ren, buy back a land, play Wildfire on the mine, trying to um, catch them lacking with basics. 
We could just get a goif down too. It's definitely not bad. I don't think I'm gonna fire off a K command yet. Now that they have a second tome, I don't really see the need. Is Ren even necessary? Like, we could just hold off on the Ren for another turn. Maybe that's better. So do we want a Kroxa into Goyf or Wildfire? Hmm. I'm going to put my faith in the wildfire. We've kind of taken like an aggressive wildfire stance in this game. I'm going to double down on it. If we see them blank here, oh man, we don't. That would have just made my day. We can always draw the third one, right? Yeah, opponent's got so many cards in hand and the ability to scry. I don't think Croax is, like, doing much. The turn it comes down, obviously escaping it is looking better and better as the game goes on. But... So opponent went bottom, but then didn't activate Tome again. Thought not Seer. Sure. I mean, we don't have a good answer to it anyway. Just part of why we've sequenced the way we did. It's not like we're... Especially soft to it, like, because our hand is just, doesn't really answer it anyway. I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe getting Kroxa down, though, to, because I was just about to say they're going to take it here. To beat that is, is pretty decent. Hmm. All right, I'm willing to trade Goyf here if they want to make that trade. This is a super interesting spot. I don't think there's a clear best line, so I'm just going to do the more proactive thing of attack, make them figure out whether or not they wish to block, make them sweat what we might or might not have drawn for turn, and take it from there. They're going to block Season Pyromancer out of fear that we can just grow the goif and win in combat, I guess. All right, that's great for us. So we might as well K command now to grow the goif a lot. And I, I guess we could have with, you know, putting an instant and an artifact in the yard by hitting Maze Mind Tome. So um, a good play from the opponent. And I guess that is the best line here. I do kind of want to take something out of their hand, but I think this is probably better. So uh, destroy target artifact. Culligan's command deals two damage to any target. Boom, boom. Sure. Opponent will scry in response. Yep. An opponent also doesn't know that we drew a land for a turn, so they probably think we're, they're at least making a single spell here. I don't know if I tap the, tap the lands correctly. The more I look at this board, the more I think I'm supposed to play a Ren rather than another Goyf. They scry to the bottom. 
But it, of course, it all depends on what we draw here off of the thought knot. Okay. I mean, we're walking into the blast zone by playing another Goyf. But it also does really force them to, like, do the blast zone thing next turn. We put them to four. I don't know. I think I'm going to make them... I think I'm going to play the Ren. That's what I'm trying to say here. I think there are too many ways it can go wrong. Why would they scry here before they see what I'm doing? I don't know if I understand that. I think there's too many ways that it can go wrong if we play both Goyfs. Like, they could have a card like Ensnaring Bridge that we can't really answer. They could have... They could just, like, survive and then Blast Zone us, and then we don't have a follow-up threat. So I think, like, playing the Ren, getting guaranteed value of at least two cards before they start... Um, threatening that blast zone, including the ability to loot peatland. I think it's pretty good. And remember, they can gain life off of Maze Mine Tome, so like the aggro of the mount plan in the face of Tome is not the greatest. Reality Smasher. A little scary. A little scary. But they are tapped out. They attack Ren. Oh, nice. And we draw Cleansing Wildfire? Oh, man, okay. So why don't we wildfire the blast zone? And then see what we draw, and then we can consider a variety of things. Third wildfire. They don't have a fourth wastes, right? You can't have a fourth wastes. <laughs> Not in Eldrazi, Tron. Nice, we got him. Unfortunately, there is no action forthcoming off the top. So do we smash in with Raging Ravine and put them to four? Again, they can gain life off of Maze, Mind's, Maze Mind Tome. Still a pretty good window for it. But it's also a pretty decent time to play a Goyf. We do have a forest to fetch, so... Yeah, let's get another Goyf down, I suppose. We can crack Peatland on the end step. Really want to fade Graveyard Wipes here. It does a lot to hurt us. The likes of Scavenger Grounds. I don't know if they'd play a card like Relic of Progenitus in this build exactly. We'd get rid of our tokens. Okay, opponents found Urza's Mine and a Spyglass. I guess we should do all of our fetching and cracking of Peatland in response to the Spyglass. I guess we... Oh, I didn't see the forest in the graveyard. I was going to say, I guess we don't have a forest to get. All right. Bloodbraid Elf is the find. Nice. Nice. Seems good. Okay, so what will they name with Spyglass? They could name... Raging Ravine or Verdant Catacombs to get some kind of guaranteed value. Or they could look for a card like Liliana of the Veil to fade our worst top decks and Cascades. They do name Ravine. And we draw another one, so they are definitely rewarded for that. But we're going to Blood Braid into Liliana and make it all better. Nope, Fatal Push. Um, no, I will not. Well... Are there? Yeah, there is already an instant in the yard, so no, let's not cast that. We'll leave it in the deck, I guess. Feels bad, though. So opponent has to chump here unless they have, like, a dismember. But in case they did have a dismember, I hang back with the Bloodbraid Elf. 
I think that makes sense. Maybe you should have thought about that more. Ooh, this is intense. This is intense. Yeah, you know, getting them to three would give us a lot more outs, wouldn't it? Hopefully it doesn't matter. But I probably didn't think about that one enough. We were weighing, like, the idea of them... Okay, the concession. <whistles> wow, guys, we are junding. We are junding them out. Feels great. Feels great. Oh, man. When jun comes together, when a plan comes together... I don't know what more you want out of life. This is just paradise when this happens, which is not every day. But we are smoking, frankly, the opposition here. Again, a lot of it has to do with simply how well we've drawn. We've drawn really well. We've never really been too flooded or too screwed. We have had a lot of the right things at the right times. And uh, I think Nastier has brought a really good list to the field today for us as well. So let's go on to round four, see if we can't keep it up. We have won the die roll, and the hand is definitely a weird one. I think I'm supposed to keep it. Um, if only one of these lands made green or especially was a fetch land, we could kind of do it all. Um, excuse me. Nevertheless, I think I'm supposed to keep it in a blind. I also think I'm supposed to shock in Blood Crypt on the play here. Um, decks like Burn punish us for that, but even so, maybe it lets us bolt a Goblin Guide or something. Um, but more importantly, we're holding up Lightning Bolt. We're also holding up Cling to Dust. We need to draw cards as fast as possible. So whether it be by like clinging the opponent's fetch land or by, okay, opponent going to go Black Cleave Cliss into Thoughtseize, some kind of a mirror, or maybe like a pseudo mirror with a Rakdo Scourge deck. Um, yeah, like whether it be by clinging the opponent's play to draw a card or simply to fire off a bolt so we could cling our own bolt if they did absolutely nothing. I think shocking in there was correct. Hopefully two points of life won't lose us the game. An opponent wisely identifying that cling is how we kind of see the cards we need to see to unlock this hand, so they take it away. Uh, I think that's the correct play. I'm also just going to not bolt them. I'm going to pass. We're just going to draw the land that we need, right? Kind of. We draw Raging Ravine. I'll definitely take it. It'd be really nice to have an untapped green land so we could play the Goyf, and then have the luxury of whatever we wanted to do from there. It's not the case. So is this a Jund Mirror? It looks like one to me. This is going to be Renin 6. It's Tarmogoyf. All right. They run Goyf out into the known Liliana. That is interesting, and that's way, way, way better for us than Ren would have been. So. Pretty easy Lily Edict here, Goyf. We've drawn Bloodbraid Elf, so let's try to hit that land, right? Let's try to hit that land. Yeah, I was surprised to see a Goyf come down there just because they know we can't really answer one. And they also knew about our Liliana. They knew we'd found the third land. We have another Lily, huh? All right. So one plays take Lily up. Pitch this Lily, play Goyf, hold up Lightning Bolt. Because we're reading them pretty strongly, I think, for Bloodbraid Elf. Another play is to just open on Spyro, see exactly what we find. Um, I don't think I like that yet, so even though it's soft to them finding a discard spell, I think we're going to take the former line. And certainly they, they must have removal if they don't have uh, a Bloodbraid, and, and possibly they have both, right? Nevertheless, I want to use my mana here. Not really prepared to loot away Lightning Bolts and Tarmogoyf to a Seasoned Pyromancer just because we think they probably have a removal spell. But the nightmare here is that they have, like, Push or Decay. Um, even Trophy would not be that bad. The nightmare is they have Push or Decay, then they untap, they have the fourth land into Bloodbraid into something great. Uh, they have K-Command. 
Okay, that's pretty rough, uh, obviously, but at least, you know, at least we didn't lose our goif yet, and we haven't lost anything good out of our hand. As far as K commands go, that one hurts, but it doesn't hurt as badly as it otherwise might. Opponent will deploy a Tarmogoyf, and then they will say, go. We'll find a Lily. All right, I'm just going to keep playing this game. We had some interesting lines there, you know, including attacking, seeing if they want to trade, or seeing if they want to butt heads and then bolting, but we'll just play the Lily. Edict the Goyf seems good. They do have a fatal push. All right. Both Goyfs go down, but we're one card ahead of the opponent, and we have a Lily on one. I guess when they go to their turn, we'll be even on cards. Um, our problem is our hand is clunky. We also have a Raging Ravine, though, so if the game continues to be a bit of a slugfest, Ravine can be a win con when the dust settles. Let's just finally draw that on tap fourth land. Instead, we will draw Thought Seize, huh? I think I'm going to begin on Spyro here. Kind of want to almost draw two two lands here. I don't know, though. Then we can play one and pitch one to a Lily plus one. Opponent will fetch in response. That is interesting, but we're pitching Thoughtseize Bolt here. Still going to try to find a world where we can eventually cast Bloodbraid Elf. Uh, and so we don't find the fourth land still. We could use the fourth land so well with now we found Kroxa, Ravine, Cling to Dust, Bloodbraid Elf. Um, feels pretty bad. We're supposed to pick Kroxa here. But I'm getting to the point where I'm just going to throw the Bloodbraid Elf away because it feels like we're never going to hit the fourth land. Um, it's all right, though. We are still ahead. OP will find the concede button. All right, we'll take it. We had some clunk, but they seem to have had some flood. Uh, and I guess when we're operational enough to play Lilianas and Spyros, despite clunk, that's good enough to beat a flooding mirror match. Okay, feels good, guys. Um, don't think we're going to play EE, most likely, but we should at least consider it. You can consider an Ashiok. I don't like it in the Jun mirror, really, but you could consider it. I don't think we're going to play Plague Man until we see Bob or Hex Drinker, which I don't think we will. Um, so two Spell Bombs, a Last Hope, and a K Command are all pretty much slam dunks, if you ask me. Uh, I don't think we want much else, so probably looking to trim some discard here. And maybe not a great deal else that we don't like, frankly. Um, yeah, everything else is great. So we got to make one cut. If we were on a 24 land build, I would cut a land. We still probably could on the draw, could get away with it. Feels a little greedy because we're siding in some relatively high curve stuff. Cutting some relatively low curve stuff. Probably shouldn't do it, but I'm at least it's at least something to think about. Uh, I guess I'm just going to cut another discard spell. Uh... Leaving them in on the draw is fine, but going down to two and bringing in this amazing 60 is also fine, if you ask me. Um, yeah, I don't think we're going to play EE or Ashiok. I think we're going to run it like this. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, we have a very powerful one-lander. Uh, I don't think we're probably supposed to keep it, though. The one land doesn't cast anything. Um, then again, mulling in the mirror really sucks. Are we supposed to try to get lucky and draw the second land? Because if we do, the hand's kind of nutty. Because it just ones for one, one for one's absolutely everything. And... Uh, I don't know. On the other hand, our deck has enough gas to win despite a mulligan, I think. Um, well, let's mulligan to a powerful functional six. We kind of have. I'll keep. 
Um, having mulliganed, I think I'm probably supposed to bottom this Tarmogoyf and just go full-on disruption followed by a Spyro mode. That's what I'm going to do. Our uh, progression is exceedingly painful. We're operating off of a fetch land, which we need to shuck for, and a thought seize and a nurturing peat land. Um, and we're on the draw, and we've mulliganed. So a lot of bad stuff going on there. Let's draw black cleave cliffs off the top. We don't. We draw a spell bomb. All right. Fetch shock thought seize. Feels pretty bad. Spell bomb could be okay, though. Opponent kept a two-lander with push double bolts. I don't think we care about any of that. Lily and Plague Man don't care about the Plague Man much. So even though they need the third land for her, I think it's an easy take of Liliana. This hand's very beatable. Uh, this is what I mean about having enough gas in the deck to mulligan to six and still getting there. Um, see what we can find. We found Ren in six. What a good draw. What a good draw. Now we get to unmulligan ourselves at the cost again of some pain. The pain is the pain is what's scary here. But they need to find a lot to punish us. They need to find creatures, and they also need to find kind of like unless they're just drawing a million Tarmogoyfs, that's that's like what we can't beat. Alright, they're gonna end step bolt the Ren, but only once. So opponent kind of splitting the difference here between mana efficiency and then giving themselves more opportunities here and then they have to bolt the ren so ren turning into a three for one for us which is amazing and we have drawn a raging ravine so we're making our land drops and that's pretty good um we're gonna play it at the continued expense of my life total, I'm going to use the uh, peat land to play spell bomb. It's not clear that we should. It clearly bluffs bolts, right? Or it clearly like demonstrates that we have bolt. But if the opponent had found a third land, they almost certainly would have just played the plague engineer. But they found a tapped one in the form of ravine. Okay. I'm going to spell bomb to cantrip. At this stage, I think that's warranted. We found Liliana. Interesting find. And then a Black Cleave Cliffs, huh? Don't know if Lily's where we want to be at this exact moment. Maybe it is, though. They cannot... Activate Ravine next turn and attack her. Just worried about Bloodbraid Elf, really. But I think we're going to go for the Lily here. Pick a land, play a Cliffs. I... I'm going to assume we won't need to bolt anything on the end step here. Um, I think we've played it fast and loose with our life total one too many times to not do this. But like many other things we've done so far, it is a judgment call. Wonder if they if they have like a trophy for Lily, I'll pretty happily go get a mountain and hold up lightning bolt that way. Opponent just for oh okay I was thinking they're going to be forced to run the plague man out Spyro is much better they picked Bolt and Plague Engineer okay we draw land we draw land so we can not quite dump out the whole hand um, but we can come pretty darn close. I don't think I want to though. Yeah, I don't think I want to. I kind of want a down tick with Lily. I realize that's not very exciting, but 
I don't really want to lose any of the resources in our hand. I think this gives us the most options. It does leave us soft in some ways to some things, and it does mean if the opponent just moves to attacks, we're probably it's like bolting Spyro or something bad like that, but Okay, that's what we're doing. I want to save Decay in case they play Tarmogoyf. We got to have something that kills a Goyf. Um, we'll let Lily go to one. I think that's fine. Hopefully next turn ticking up becomes attractive. Ugh, opponent with another Spyro. That is brutal. That is brutal. This is the type of thing they needed here. They loot away Bloodbraid Elf in a Bloodstained Mire. They are hanging on like Grim Death to that Fatal Push. Alright. So I think we should decay here, I guess, now, just to empty our hand out. So I'm going to get a Forest... Crack Peatland and then likely decay a Spyro. Yeah, that's what we're doing. We have found Cling to Dust, huh? Okay, we can actually cast that, so that's pretty cool uh, while still casting Spyro. So. It's going to cling lands, I guess, in case they draw a Ren. This has been such a complicated league. We draw Clothis. All right, I'm going to play that over, uh, over Spyro here, I do believe. Seems good. Um... Yeah, let's get a card out of their hand with Lily. Getting, like, anything out of their hand seems good here, whether it's action or a land. They do need to make land drops, so... That's what we'll do. We can't protect the Lily, but... She's done plenty. Hopefully Clothis and Spyro can take it from here. Really interesting mirror here. OP still doesn't have double black for Liliana, and they still have that fatal push in hand. Such a strange situation. Really is. All right, we really want to fade Coligan's command. That'd be a disaster. If they bought back a Spyro and made us pitch ours. They have Ren. That's not good for us, uh, but... Not as bad as some other things would be. Okay, we draw a Spyro. Oh, not the greatest one. We already have one, but sure. Um, Yeah, that's kind of rough to have found the other Spyro at this exact wrong time. Does punish us a little bit for slow rolling in, but I think what we've done so far has been pretty good. Um, we also find ourselves punished for tapping green, which I think on average is correct, but here we could be holding up trophy or even main phasing it on the Ren if we hadn't. So to that end, I think I'm not playing Swamp. 
I'm going to hold it in case they have Lily plus one intentions. We can pitch the swamp to protect our assassin's trophy. A lot going on here, guys. A lot going on. Hope I'm playing well for you. Uh, this is a lot of fun. It's also, we've had a really skill-testing league, not going to lie. But I've been enjoying it. Opponent can clear the board if they so desire with a Ren tick down and a Revolted push. Then maybe they pivot to Racing by attacking with Raging Ravine. Doesn't look like that's the play, though, for them. Uh, afraid maybe of Lightning Bolt. And so now, notably, we do not want to target Spyro because in response they can make the tokens if they if they just pass. Um, looks like they're going to do something second main, though. <sighs> Stupid K command. Okay. We have to fight through a third Spyro now. But we have Clothis. But we have Clothis. And we have Tarmogoyf. All right, so let's just eat the Bloodbraid Elf so they can't K-Command to buy that one back ever. Hmm. I don't think I want to run the Goyf out into the push. I'm going to play the land now, though. We're going to say go. We're holding up Trophy. We're holding up Spyro tokens. We're also holding up Cling to Dust. There's a lot we're doing here. I think that's correct at this stage of the game, to hold all our stuff up. Not sure if I'd compete over a Renin 6 plus 1. Probably not. I think they have enough lands at this point. Yep. Okay, what have they found? Lily of the Veil, huh? Brutal, not going to lie. I'm just going to lose the Goyf here. But they get to go Lily into Spyro. All right, so it is slightly more mana efficient to make Spyro tokens than to draw off of Kling, but I think drawing off of Kling is a little better. I'm not paying much attention to what I do here, honestly, with my exiling. We found stomping ground. You got to give me more than this to work with, deck. You really do. You really do. Lily of the Veil. I guess we're just dumping the whole hand out, right? Trophy there, Lily. Play our stomping ground, take our Lily up. Actually, why don't we take the Lily down? 
play the stomping ground than trophy in response to their lilies plus one. That seems arguably a little better because we're losing the lily on the crackback either way. Opponent does choose to let the Spyro go down. That's interesting. It does make some sense for sure. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't think they're playing Veil of Summer. If we thought they were, we'd trophy main fist so as to beat the Lily, guaranteed. But. Okay, okay. We've been on the back foot for a long time um, in terms of how the draws have played out. It's just like Clothis potentially soloing them virtually. Uh, a lot of other things playing a role, but... Then, oh, Tarmogoyf. This is the type of stuff they could have to win the race, but they do not activate Raging Ravine, which is a little scary. Seems like that's the cue their progression is sending. Oh, they're going to do it in the beginning of combat. Yeah, okay. All right. So thankfully, we have the Clothis triggers, and we have our Spyro tokens now. Worst case scenario to just chump while Clothis wins the game. That's the idea, anyway. And to that end, maybe we eat... Oh, come on, deck. So many lands. Um, maybe we eat Plague Man here? Nah, we'll eat their Spyro. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're not like double spelling ever. Do we just conceal information with this? I mean, double spelling with stuff like Season Pyromancer and Cling to Dust, right? Conceal info for a turn, I guess. Ooh, this is intense. Here comes that ravine. Here come our jump blockers. <laughs> I think we're just taking any chump as soon as it's available here. Man, their Spiros have buried us. Buried us. They've come at the exact right times for OP. Opponent just firing off a of brutality to drain. They've still got that fatal push. Surprised they're not pinging with Ren, but obviously a Ren ult is a win condition in and of itself. Um, okay, we've drawn abrupt decay. Let's eat the plague man. This is so complicated. All right, we have basic mountain that we can fetch.
to still do everything we want to do. I think we have to decay the goif and find some other way to not lose to the Ren. Such as maybe just maybe attacking it off the field with one elemental token that doesn't have to chump. But they have pushed for that, I guess. We have a ravine too. Lots going on. Need the opponent to finally break here. They've been drawing gas like nobody's business. See if they want to push one of these before blocks, which is why I sequence this way, not showing the decay quite yet. Although I guess technically to be even better with sequencing, we should have not fetched first, but there's so much to keep track of. I kind of wanted to make sure we had a basic in our deck. Ooh, opponent going for a K command. We do get a bit of a blowout here. But they've drawn really well again with another K command. It's just uh, a little much for us to keep up with here. Um, well, if the, if they play to land this turn, I think they might be dead if they haven't. But they have not played a land. All right. Um, hmm. Okay, no block. We'll see if they have like a... We'll see if they play a land. They don't. All right, they're just dead. Oh, well, we draw lightning bolts anyway, making it really easy. Um... That is just the concession. Oh my goodness. What is going on with this league? We are running like we are on fire. And it's been really tough in places to navigate and really tough to earn the wins. But I think we've been earning them and I think our list is looking awesome. Um, so yeah, we had Lethal on the crackback, Clothis draining for two, Ravine attacking for four, Elemental Token swinging for lethal. That was Xaxes. Of course, we ripped Lightning Bolt off the top to make it deterministic. Um, I guess even if they had had a land to play, nah, maybe we... Anyway, doesn't matter. I can't think anymore. Uh, <laughs> this is incredible, guys. Hope you're having fun, Nostia. Hope everybody else is having fun, too. We are 4-0, and 8-0. And, and you know what that means. That means we got to play around 5. I'll see you there. All right, it is the fifth and final round. We've got a hand that I think should be kept in the blind. We'll see how it lines up. Notably, Inquisition and Decay are some of our best cards in most opening hands, but there are situations where things can kind of go over the top of them, right? We're against a Jeskai Triome deck. All righty. I was really hoping for something where I didn't have to think quite this hard in the final round. I'm really, really drained, but I'm going to do my best, guys. Um, we'll see if we can get there. So they have Hour of Promise, so I guess this is a Field of the Deck four-color deck. Um, that's what it's looking like to me. Double Path to Exile. Um, there's just no great outcome here for us. I think we're going to take Teferi and hope to draw Liliana so we can beat them by plus oneing and punishing them for having a handful of removal. Um, I also don't necessarily mind running the first Goyf out into a path. So I think that's what we'll do. Just go get another Shockland out of the deck.
So will opponent path us for the sake of mana efficiency, thereby ramping us into a turn 3 Bloodbraid Elf? Would they be so kind? They'll have nothing else, we'll go turn 3 Bloodbraid into Lily, we'll win. No, they're not going to do it. Not yet, anyway. They're just going to pass. We're just going to draw another land, that really sucks. Really sucks. Well, I'm taking the hit. Rightfully so, because it's unclear whether we have the third land or not. But unfortunately for us, we not only have the third land, we have the fourth, fifth, and sixth lands. We'll go get our beautiful Onslaught basic mountain here. One path down. Opponent missing, making the land drops they didn't have. And I guess they found something that's a good 4-drop to play here. That's pretty bad because we can't decay it if it's a full 4-drop. <sighs> Hate this card so much. ETB draw a card. Gain the life. Add the mana. Deal 4 damage to everything. We draw Lily. All right. Just got to edict this dummy, right? Right. Yeah. run out of mire in case we need to decay something, but I don't really know that we will. Like, one of the only small threats they could play is probably Little Teth, and that doesn't get decayed, and they just have drawn the missing land, so Hour of Promise, Field of Ruin, or rather, Field of the Dead. It's all not good. It's all not good. I think I'm just decaying a zombie here, hoping to get lucky enough where that's the difference maker. I don't think, like, playing for the long game does a great deal here. Alright, Bloodbraid into, I don't know, maybe a trophy to beat Field of the Dead? Maybe some way to just really realistically race them, but with another path in hand and another unknown, I don't know if we have that. All right, we found a second lily, sure. I'm going to keep trying to chew through the zombie tokens here. Okay, do they have any other land? Oh, that was a Flooded Strand. Yeah, the new art I did not notice. That was a Fetch Land. Mystic Sanctuary, Field of the Dead. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't with these decks. Very exciting gameplay, isn't it? <laughs> we face some doozy matchups this league. This is actually a really hostile league for Jund. Um, we don't have Maelstrom Pulse in the deck. We don't have Plague Engineer in the main deck. I don't think we have outs to million zombies, do you? I've got Ren and Six, too, because why not? We have Tarmogoyf. All right, uh, I guess the new plan is to try to draw enough burn to win. So to that end, let's just play defense with our stuff here. Also play it safe with our life total, but whatever. So if they fetch, yeah, two lightning bolts can kill them. 
if there is justice in the world, we'll draw two lightning bolts. I would rather have lost to any other deck than to this one. I think we're going to lose to this one. I just, like, feel it. But maybe we'll get lucky both post-side games. Um, but like every other deck we played is kind of cool in some way. This one just tilts me off the face of the earth. <laughs> uh, are we dead if we... T oh, we're just dead. Oh, whatever. Stupidity. Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe I could have done something different. I can't... Imagine that it matters. Okay, good times. Um, against Field of the Dead, Hour of Promise, Mystic Sanctuary. There's a lot that Ashiok hits. Um, EE e actually will beat the zombies. That's a cool out. I'm going to play it. Um, I assume they're playing Uro too, so we maybe want Spell Bombs. K Command could play a role. Cleansing Wildfire seems good ish um we could play boil i'm not sure if we're supposed to i think the lists vary enough that i i don't entirely know um like you can make a case for literally every card in this 15 which is kind of funny um considering that the matchup's still really bad <laughs> okay i think i'm going to leave in the clings and probably not play the spell bombs um Maybe trim a lily, trim a spyro. Like, we have to compete on so many axes that I think we're supposed to shave around the edges and try to have as little, like, redundancy in bad ways as possible. Um, it's also very unclear to me whether we should be, like, um, leaving in all lightning bolts, for example, to try to steal games that way. I think we probably can. I'm going to cut some decays until we see reasons to leave them in. Um, we've got a lot to do. So let's bring in these six cards. We can bring in another card. We can play like this. I think it's pretty good. Um, are we supposed to boil? I'm going to mute for a second, take a drink, and look at a list. These mana bases tend to be like moderately boilable. I guess if the match, if we think the matchup's that bad, we should play it. All right, let's do this. Let's hedge against Uro with a single spell bomb in addition to the clings, and we'll play boil. Hey, boil! We already had one OP boil. Maybe we'll steal the final match with another one. How cool would that be? I'm not sure exactly how good it is, though. Um, this is a one-lander. I don't think we can keep it. It's a one-lander with Inquisition, but it's got a really high curve besides that. Mulligan. Okay, this is an Ashiok hand. I like that. We'll keep. Um... So I want to cover... I, I think Ashiok covers us pretty well against a lot of things besides Uro. I definitely want to keep the Spell Bomb to cover us against Uro. I guess keeping the third land is responsible. We should therefore bottom either EE or Trophy, and I'm not certain which it should be. I think I'm going to bottom EE because Trophy can hit Field of the Dead and can also hit a bunch of other stuff. Yep, yep, yep. I don't know what our odds are here. Is it 1090? Is it 2080? Couldn't tell you. Couldn't really tell you. We draw a basic mountain not good at all. <laughs> oh, not like this. Not like this. This league has still been amazing, but like running into this deck just it literally does ruin my time playing magic. I cannot believe it exists. There's a run in six. Okay, we're gonna compete over this. Um or are we, because Ashiok just kind of locks it out? I think I still will. It still puts them down a card from where they would otherwise be. I'm going to do this first to thin.
We've drawn Cleansing Wildfire. All right. It could play a role. We draw another one. That could also play a role. Uh, but for now, I think I like Ashiok Self Mill. Or maybe even Ashiok Do Nothing. But Self Mill like, could let us find a Kroxa and start getting somewhere. We don't we wanna don't wanna mill too cavalierly because they can ping this down with Renin Six as well. Um and we'll need to mill them most likely, but I think we're so unfavored that I'm gonna take high upside lines. So yeah, self mill looking for a Kroxa. We find uh we put Thought Seas and four and three lands into the bin. Not very good. Uh, would have not minded drawing the thought sees. Opponent will ping Ashiak. We find Kroxa. Okay. Well, it got us closer to Kroxa anyway. I don't even want to cast the wildfires because that just gives Ren something to buy back. Um, but we'll see if they pitch a land to Kroxa, in which case I will start going on the wildfire plan. I guess. Just try to tax them out of basics and draw cards. They pitch a duplicate Ren. That is intriguing. All right. No wildfire play. We'll hold up trophy instead. See what the turn yields. Ren just pinging the Ashiok. Okay, opponent plays a Field of the Dead. I kind of hoped they would. Um, at the same time, I'm probably not supposed to hit it quite yet. My first thought was maybe, I almost said this, maybe they'll play Field of the Dead and then we get to trophy that, have them spin their wheels, but then they're just buying it back with Ren. And since we have, like, if we had nothing else to do, then maybe we go on the Wildfire plan, but since we have things to do, I'm just going to pass and play Kroxa. Leave the Ravine in there in case uh, we do draw the Ren of our own. We have one or two Rens in. I do not recall. We have two Rens in. They've got a path, obviously. That sucks. Kroxa does get Omnath out of the hand. That's not nothing. Clearly Ashiok's a big thorn in their side, so we'll leave it alone. Not activate again, although I would have some interest in self-milling looking for another Kroxa, right? Opponent just not making another land drop. Maybe they, they probably have fetches locked in hand. Well, we have a Thought Seize. I guess let's find out, right? Man, I wish we had this Raging Ravine on the field. Oh, look, Veil of Summer. Jeez, this... Uh, this has been one of the most fun leagues I've ever played with one of the least fun match fives I've ever played. <sighs> what do we do now? That's such BS. It's such BS. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. All right. We're going to start wildfiring things, trying to get lucky. We got to find more cards. Freaking, freaking Veil of Summer. <laughs> At least this gives them a tension between, you know, taking down to finish off Ashiok, taking up with Ren for value. We might want to kind of force them to trade, but... Uh, okay, let me draw a land. Our deck is just looking very embarrassing against this pile, which is its entire purpose. We're just basic checking them as much as we can. 
and literally only drawing lands off of it. All right. Um, yeah, we, we just lose. We just found land, 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 basically. Uh, okay, one last act with Ashiok. We're going to self-mill. We're going to exile. Um, well, you know what? Maybe we should hit the sanctuary with this trophy. And then we should self-mill and exile the opponent's yard. Just go all in on this plan, which is not a very good one. Um, I'm assuming I have a shock defect. I didn't look. Not a green one. Just kill me now. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, yeah. Self-mill. Looking for a Kroxa. Exiling all those cards we hit. No Kroxa. Uh, that was, dis that, like, it was already bad, but that was disastrously bad. We get max punished for, I think, like, a, a medium line, but one that we kind of, like, what we're not doing anything else, so let's take it. But as expected, they did have a fetch land locked in hand, and now they have something to loop with Ren, even though we destroyed three lands, exiled them all from the graveyard. They have Omnath. We draw Inquisition. Very bad stuff. But we'll cast it. At least there's no Veil of Summer possibility right now. They have another Ren. They have a Growth Spiral Cryptic Command. I just want to stop playing against this deck. <laughs> I just want to stop. But I'll, I'll stick it out. We got to play for the 5-0. and o. Maybe we'll get lucky, right? Uh, I guess we take Spiral. I guess we're going to trophy this guy. But it's all, like, we're spinning our wheels so badly right now, and it's all because, um, well, it's because of a variety of factors. I think the biggest factor is we couldn't get any pressure on the field. They had the path for Kroxa, and that was about, that about sealed our fate relative to everything else that has been going on. I'm sure my play here has not been optimal, but again, like, what are we supposed to do with our hands? And then there's the land here. Okay, you know what? Um, if this was anything besides a 5-0 and match, I would click concede button there. As it is, we are duty-bound, I believe, to play to our Fjord outs, but the mere existence of this deck makes me not want to play modern anymore. Um... And I, I don't mean to be, I don't mean to exaggerate, like, we have had wonderful progressions all up until this match. Um, but they're, these decks just simply go too far, right? I can't believe Veil of Summer, Field of the Dead, Omnath, Uro, Mystic Sanctuary, frankly, even Ren and Six. It's hard to imagine them all coexisting, but here we are. And we have drawn a seasoned Pyromancer, definitely an okay one, but this all feels very academic to me. So we use Lily as Cryptic Bait, and then we hope Spyro resolves and... <laughs> Whoops, might as well play this land first. We hope Spyro resolves... And then the unlikeliest comeback of all time happens, right? Do they have a second cryptic? They have Mystic Sanctuary to buy back that cryptic. They don't quite have the mana to growth spiral into it, thankfully. Unless they, well, no, they could also play a land from hand if they have one, which they do. So, yeah. Here it is. Here's the super fair loop okay i can i can take no more my friends i realize we still have the fjord out of the opponent failing to pay their internet bill and therefore losing connectivity handing us the five and oh thanks for the hand reveal really love to see that <laughs> okay officially the most tilting four and one of all time because we ran into that pile i don't know what to tell you. I'm somebody who absolutely loves this game. 
and I get paid to play it. That is like the dream. When I started, that was the absolute dream. And I have the most wonderful community and I have a really awesome viewer base broadly beyond like the Discord and Patreon community. And despite all of that, and despite being thrilled with 4-0 going into 5-0, merely playing against that deck makes me want to just say, I don't want to do this anymore. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying that is my plan, but that is the reaction those decks engender in me. I just don't want to do that anymore. There are much better things to do with a person's life than play into Uro, Omnath, Field of the Dead, Mystic Sanctuary, etc., etc., etc. I say that just to fully and unreservedly express my opposition to those decks existing as they do. I think we need aggressive bans for that type of card. Uh, we are not getting bans at a high enough clip relative to how they print um, cards that slot into those type of linear value generating archetypes. You might say that they aren't linear because they play some interaction, but the manner in which they generate value is so linear that they can afford to play interaction while automatically beating 80 plus percent of the time, I would say, other decks trying to leverage traditional interaction. Enough said about that. This, uh, up until that fifth round, was probably one of the coolest leagues I played in a really long time. Um, I could not ask for much more from Jun than it showed us here. Jun is not really supposed to beat those uh, four-color Omnath or Omnath piles, and it didn't. Everything else, we had a lot of tough matchups. We had the mirror, we had blue-white control, we had decks trying to grind left, right, and center. We had decks trying to do a whole lot of things. We stopped them from doing that to enough of a degree where our powerful permanents or our aggressively slanted permanents, depending on which exact game we're zeroing in on, could find a hole to exploit and to get us over the line. This was an epic league, and my only regret is that it was marred by that fifth round. I don't even care that it denied us the 5-0 and as much as I care that we had to subject you, the viewer, and myself, the pilot, to that. I wish we lost to anything else, quite literally anything else, but I said enough about that. I'll stick to I'll stick to that. I got to stop myself from going off too hard, right? Although I know you love it. Anyway, um this was a junding out for the history books. This was a really strong 4 and 1. Uh we were 4 and 08 no going into the 5th round and we definitely showed the power of jund in the modern format. It can keep up with just about anything except what we played in round 5. And I have to believe that the deck in round 5 is not going to be indefinitely allowed to exist in the format, but that is a story or a discussion perhaps for a different time. The list that Nostier and I brought you today I think is really, really nicely balanced, and I think we saw that um, throughout the course of our league. You might say that we should be loaded down with ways to fight the, uh, the Aramnath piles. I'm not sure that there are great ways to do that. They just seem to have every avenue covered, and that's not to say you can never win, but it is to say that like you're not necessarily rewarded for dedicating really narrow slots to them, or even dedicating a critical mass of slots to them, because everything they do is good against us intrinsically, and then they get to side into Veil of Summer. So, anyway... um. The the only weakness we saw on our list was its weakness to that four-color deck, but I don't know that there's a great way to up our percentage points there other than what we're already doing. Uh, we are already playing two Ashiak, which is very good against that deck. We are already playing EE, which helps us against a lot of small creature, small permanent decks, but also can come in there. We do have Boil as a way to cheese out free wins. Like I think we are kind of like almost as maxed out against that, that matchup as we can be, and it's just... Uh, I, I think we'd reach diminishing returns if we tried to get more into it, and therefore I think we should focus our deck building um, more on beating the rest of the format while also ensuring that we have good stuff to do in that matchup. 
I think that's what this list does. So I'm really pleased with how it performed, Nastier. Uh, thank you so much, my friend. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, thanks for your ongoing support. Congrats once again on making Top 8 being the only Jund presence, amazingly enough, in the Battle for the Veil Top 8. And thank you again for all of your contributions to the community. Thank you as well to our newest Inquisitors, Joseph Chiavaro, Mom Quest, and Daniela Scotecci. I know some of these people from other discords, that would be MomQuest, and I know some of them from already posting, although they are very new, some great stuff on my own discord. So I really value each of your contributions. Very happy to have you on board. Hope you enjoy the community. Thanks for the support. And thank you even more to Miles, who very generously has signed up as a tireless tier supporter. I hope I did not sulk too much for your taste, my friends, in the fifth and final round. Um, isn't that just how magic goes? Re I, I never claim to have played perfectly because I don't know in the moment, but I felt we really earned our first four victories, and it just felt like it was a day where very little could stop us, but probably ran into the only thing that could. So hope I didn't sulk and cry and complain too much for you. Hope I didn't go off too hard, but you all agree with me. Deep down, even the Aramnath players, you agree with me too. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, any suggestions on the list, we're, we're happy to field. But honestly, if I was going to play Jund again in the near future, I would run this one right back. Maybe taking a quick look at if there's anything we can do to really blow out the Aramnath piles, but kind of doubt it, again, for reasons I have uh, expanded upon in the last few minutes of the wrap-up here. Uh, however, I did say if we run Jund out again in the near future, I'm not going to at least quite yet, because we have some other really cool donation leagues lined up. I think we're going to play Yogmoth combo for the first time ever. That's going to be spicy. I think we're also going to play like a stock Racto Scourge list, which is going to be, again, very spicy, very powerful. And we also have good old Cat Rock waiting in the wings as well. So lots of great donation leagues. If you're looking for more content until those come out, go back a few videos and watch the playlist of the Battle for the Veil. It's really fun stuff. Kind of a unique change of pace from what we usually do on the channel. Anyway, guys, I hope I didn't drop any lines here that... Um, were available to us in the fifth and final round. We get denied the 5-0, and but we went 4-0, and 8 no leading up to it against some really tough matchups, against some really good progressions. Jund is finding its feet no matter what in the meta, and we do have to lean into some new printings like everybody else, but Spyro, Clothis, uh, we didn't see maybe enough of Croaks of this league for my tastes, but Croaks is included here, Ren and Six. All of these newer cards were very, very powerful, not going to lie. So anyway, there we go. We beat the Eldrazi Nemesis to a great league. Thank you for watching. I will see you for the next one. Hope everybody out there has a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you soon.